the lessons that he has learned out of it and perhaps provoke a bit of thinking for us to be able to get out of our comfort zones. But before we bring him to the floor, um, just a few housekeeping rules. Uh, we request that you please put your um, self on mute until you know, you're requested to speak. If you do need to ask any questions, we have the chat room at the bottom of the screen. We should be able to channel those through to John. Um, as usual, he will speak for about half an hour and then thereafter we'll break into our virtual rooms and John will be the Robi Mung ambassador so that we have an opportunity to be able to ask him the questions um, that we so long to do. So to set the scene, um, I'd like us to play a short clip and then thereafter invite John Gumi to take his place and speak to us. So can Tai, let's look at that. No human is limited. Any human being can go beyond his limits. Any human being can go beyond his thoughts. No human being should be limited in his thoughts or in what he or she should be doing. Self-belief is critically crucial. Totally believe in myself. Believe in my teammates. Believe in my team. That's what pushes me beyond the fire. The last bend in the second, and you'll see the finish line ahead of him. Look at the crowds here. Elliot Kipchoge. My advice to anyone who is struggling to break his own limits is self-belief. Kipchoge is the champion again. Who sets the limit in me? Indeed, no human is limited. It is only in our minds. So to get us going this evening, allow me to welcome John Gumi, who is one of our brand ambassadors and one of the most respected um, board chairmen as voted in the Business Monthly magazine. John Karibusana, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rose. Um, I have to start by saying I have no idea why anybody would vote me a respected chair. I haven't done anything of note in the last year to be voted such, so I think they must have thought that I would raise hell if I wasn't. Uh, I have really been focused on matters of power. So um, Rose asked me to speak today for about 20, 25 minutes, basically uh, talking about uh, my board journey. Um, I have spoken to you in the past uh, in other capacities and other in other fora. Uh, so I may repeat, I might repeat myself. If I, if I do, please forgive me. Or uh, let me just, uh, uh, let me go take a random walk through my journey. And hopefully when we get to the, uh, to, 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 to the smaller groups, uh, you will be able to focus on the areas that you really want to focus on. Let me start with my, my journey. Where have I been? I have been in six public sector boards, the first one in 1983, when I was still in my 20s. And I have been in seven private sector boards. That excludes any boards where I went in because they were companies, they were family or my own companies. And I've been in three social boards, uh, Kenton College, Oxford, Oxford and Cambridge Society, and the Tiger Country Club. Uh, Rose told me that this, these uh, talks should we really focus on public sector boards, and I will do that, but I don't think you can separate or you can properly look at, uh, at, uh, at, at a public sector board without contrasting it with private sector boards. And I always like by uh, starting, uh, the academic in me, the, the teacher in me likes to start from the beginning, which is what is a board of directors and what's, what is its purpose. 
A private sector board is clear. It's a group of people chosen by shareholders to manage their company. Easy stuff. They, you know, give us returns, uh, make us money, don't lose our money, uh, don't get into trouble, and so on and so forth. The public sector board, which I believe is what you want to, which as I've said, is what you want to focus on, it's also a group of people picked by government, and in a few cases, specified groups and organizations to, among other things, manage their company. And I think the among other things is quite important if you are having um, ambitions to serve on public sector boards, and I will come back that come back to that in a moment. So you can immediately see the differences between private sector and public sector. Public sector, sector boards are clearly laid out appointment criteria. Have one master, the shareholders, one purpose. Um, have uh, have uh, and a very clear uh, uh, imperative of maximizing shareholder returns. Public sector boards are very different. The way you're appointed is, uh, how can I put it, a work of art. The way you are dismissed is a work of art. Um, um, I always tell people that the best, the best uh, description I know of a board in a public sector board is for you to, to think of how you came into the world. You came to the world and found the siblings. Same thing with public sector boards. You are appointed and usually it is on your first day uh, in a board meeting that you meet your fellow board members for the first time. So it's a very, so it's a very um, uh, interesting place to be in. And it means that just like in a family, you've got to find your way to getting along or not getting along. Uh, private public sector boards have very many masters. Um, some are obvious, the treasury, the parent ministry, parliament, um, SCAC, uh, um, inspectorate unit. Uh, some are uh, not so obvious, uh, or the general various bodies, D DCI, ESCC, and some are outright shadowy. You don't know who they are, but you learn very quickly uh, who has uh, the who, who has power and who has not. And likewise, uh, public sector bodies have many mandates. Making money is not usually the highest of them, especially for the non-commercial power statals. And even for the commercial uh, power statals, the commercial state corporations, um, there are other purposes, the social there are other purposes which are written. There are many which are not have not been written, and uh, you need to learn as you go along. Just like in a family, you learn rules which are not clear, and, uh, and until you you run a farm of them, then you know them. So, what's been my experience on serving on public sector boards? Well, maybe it's because I've been put or been involved in some of the more one some of the more controversial ones. In the public sector, there is a rule that the more the resources uh, that that entity commands, either by, by way of receipt or expenditure, the, 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 hotter, the, the hotter it is. And I can tell you that my career serving on public sector boards has been hot, has been controversial, has been very public, has uh, involved threats, has involved, uh, has, has involved uh, hints of bribes, has, has involved uh, abuse, has involved many accusations, some extremely fantastical. I've been accused of helping Kenyans to steal the equivalent of, of two or three years budget of Kenya full budget in the trillions. I've been accused of, uh, what's, what, what's the one I love, of uh, of using Kenya pipeline helicopters to take a bevy, bevies of young ladies, of exotic ladies to Mombasa for weekends of, as I told somebody last night, a debauchery. Um, it's, been, it's been interesting, 
But uh, on the other hand, it's been rewarding because you do find that you do make things happen. Uh, tra- helping to transform, leading and helping to transform Kenya pipeline from from uh, from uh, an, an entity forever in the papers, uh, not too sure whether it'll survive or not, has been um, into into governments absolutely uh, go to parastate or today into one that has uh, got into all manner of places in, 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 in infrastructure in the initiative it took two years ago on the sanitizers and, 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 and masks for the Kenyan public. Those sorts, those sorts of things are very rewarding and it is it's good to see that you are able to make you know, pipelines more efficient or ports or railways or, or airports or indirectly the work I'm doing today uh, in uh, first in initially chairing the PPA task force and then and then in, in chairing the steering committee, seeing the real benefits of people's power bills coming down and people beginning to see hope in KPLC and other things. So there are, it's very rewarding, but it is very, those rewards come with huge costs or huge risks and very, very, a little reward, by the way, extremely. And I must warn you on this. I know there are a whole number of accusations levied at people, but I can tell you my own experience and I've served primarily as chairman is that um, the, 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 the financial rewards in, in serving on public sector boards are very, very small, which is not surprising because that is the way public sector boards started. I recall in, in, in my father's time when he served on such boards, they were all seen as uh, as a way to give back, to be, to be, to be, to be thankful in the way that people serve on local committees at, in, in communities or in the churches and mosques and, and, and so on. So financial reward for yourself is very, is very small, but the risks are very high, not just the risks that I have outlined, but also the fact that nowadays uh, the fiduciary responsibility of public sector board directors is very real. The risks you take are very real. I became a, a, a very well known in the corridors of parliament. I think I went there more than 15 times. I became very well known in at the DCI where the Ascaris uh, allowed me to park inside me without my asking because I was a regular visitor there and also at ESCC. So those things are, are re- and in the high court, so those, those risks are real. They are real in terms of interpretation risk and they're also very, very real in, in the risk of, uh, of uh, actually risking going to jail. <laughs> Um, so I've said public sector boards have been rewarding. I've said that they have been, um, uh, the experience, my experience has been rewarding, even though frustrating at times. I've seen the results of my work. I've seen the results of my, of my, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of the incredible demands I have made on myself to, to, to achieve. Would I? join a public sector board again? Yes, I would. I think that um, we are so few of us who are privileged enough to have been um, to have been educated well, to have been given opportunities to 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 do good in our in our private sector boards and, and private sector rules elsewhere. And really the the other thing that we must re- remember is that our lives and the lives of our com- compatriots depend a great deal on these institutions working well. They have huge assets. The three parastatals under the mantle of ICDC have a combined asset base of about a billion and a half, sorry, a trillion and a half uh, shillings. That's a lot of money. That's half the Kenyan budget, if you want to think about it. And they also affect people there in real terms, whether it's health, education, power, and, 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 uh, and uh, and so on. So in answer to what I suspect will come out as a question is yes, it is worth serving in them. Now, let, let, let me turn to my audience. You are a woman.
And in the last three, four years, we've made a tremendous effort to bring more women into the public sector population. I, the board population, I, I know you're wondering who, who I refer to when I say we, let's keep that for another day. Um, and, and today, if my numbers are still correct, roughly between 40 and 50% of directors on public sector boards are women, and we have 30 plus, in fact, I think now it's closer to, 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 to 50 who are, who are chairs of parastatals. But I think the, the key change that has happened in, in the last two, three years is not so much that there are more women, more women in parastatals, is that we have put more women in muscular parastatals, Kenya pipeline, Kenya power, uh, Kenya ports, uh, some really hefty places, which were traditionally reserved for men. So with women would, would be put into thus the into the the softer public corporations, you know, soft ones dig dealing with academia or social or, or all that sort of thing. But in the last four, in the last two, three years, we have really gone, uh, gone um, uh, in the opposite direction and put them as chairs of Kenya pipeline, chairs of, of Kenya power, chairs of Kenya anti-counterfeit, chairs of really, really sensitive places, uh, which people had not believed would ever be chaired by that the, the board would, would ever be, be, be chaired by, by women. And that also applies to the population that is on the boards. Uh, could there be more? Yes. What have been the barriers to more, 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 more of, of, of the women on boards and especially uh, women, not just as chairs, but also as directors? Yeah, I think there are mainly self-imposed barriers, that there are jobs which are, which are Result for men, what will other women think, that there's a boys club out there that decides and I'll be humiliated, I'll be ignored when I'm on the board, uh, that there is active discrimination, uh, no one knows who you are, you don't know how things work. And I remember talking on this very topic to a group of women, I think under the age, the ages of either women on the board or another organization. And I and I really, really encourage the women to find the mentors. And that's not just talk. I think uh, I have done my, my bit uh, to mentor women as we are doing now, to even hope, to give courage, and, and to tell them that it can be done. And let me finish by getting granular. Um, I've talked about success in boards and what, what my experience has been. But I think it's also important for you to remember that a board room and a, and a board is, a, is an organism. It's an organism made up of people and that you do need to, to be able to, uh, to uh, operate in it. Uh, it's not just your skills that are required there, it's your, it's your ability to, uh, to manage stakeholders, to manage colleagues, to manage uh, peers, um, something which intuitively you would think that, that women understand, given the truism, and I assume it's, a, it's an accurate one, that women have far better EQ than men, but actually it doesn't end up that way, and boards then tend to end up more masculine, more feral, more ruthless, more cutthroat than you would expect. And I've given the women over time a set of advising rules. Um, I, I, I saw that this is being recorded, so, so, so that's good. I can rack through them. Don't be a wallflower. You know, learn how to speak and speak up. When I was a chair of, say, KPC and other places, I, I would insist that the women stop sitting um, uh, at, the, at the end of, of the table, hoping that I will not see them, but I did, and I, and I made sure that they actually sat closer to me. Don't look for perfection in presentations, a really bad feeling among women. Um, you know, you all want to be 100% before you can do anything. Um, uh, you can talk anything convincingly. Men tend to, uh, men tend to, uh, to 
glance at things and wing it and talk very convincingly. And you must learn to be able to be nimble and agile in, 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 in speaking out and not to look for perfections. This is not an exam. Don't hide in, in soft committees, uh, uh, HR committee or you know, nice committee. No, I insisted when I was chair of KPC that the women chair the power committees, the audits, the uh, technical, financial, something like that. Do, do dress smartly, do dress well, but don't dress pro provocatively. Let me tell you, uh, you, you, you do not want to, be, to, 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 to awaken those masculine uh, hormones in, in a boardroom. It, it just becomes very, very destabilizing. But on the other hand, do not forget that in, in a boardroom, and, and I know I've said this before, and I've been told I'm being politically incorrect, but I'm being realistic. Remember that in a boardroom, the men there, and for generally you will find that men are in majority in such boardrooms, they are unconsciously competing for your attention. So you, they, they, we can't help it. So use that very powerful advantage to make sure you get, you get your way without going uh, overboard. You know, remain feminine, but don't be cold. Read your board papers, don't cram them. As I said earlier, these aren't exams, be on time. I was about to blast rules for us not being on, on time here and starting on time at 6.30. Um, and also remember, and I'm, I'm, I'm going back to the issue of men, women, we, 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 relationships that secretly we are terrified of strong women. So use your feminism selectively, knowing when to be steely and when to be demure. Both politics will always happen. Both, as I said, are living organisms and be on the lookout for elegant knifing. Know who's the alpha male or the alpha female and know how to align yourself to him or her or how to oppose him or her, what risks you're running and understand who are the real power. The real power could, could end up being very much you. I promised you a random walk. I've given you a random walk for about 25 minutes, actually not bad. Um, over to you, Rose. Thank you, John, for those tidbits and words of wisdom. Interesting around, uh, you know, how you get appointed to the public sector boards is a wonder, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> that for me was an interesting perspective. <laughs> so, you know, before we get into the breakaway rooms, I suppose one question is, you know, so, so from your perspective, what's, what makes a progressive board? So I know you've, you've started a diverse range of boards. What would you say are perhaps the three things uh, that makes board progressive? Number one, and really, really important for the chairman. If your chairman cannot, your chairman is absolutely critical. The board takes and management take their cue from him or her. They, the board is, I, I can't repeat this often enough, a human organism. Mm -hmm. And just like, in, just like a family will unconsciously take signals from the father, sorry, I'm still a, a paternalist. Um, board will take signals from the chair and act accordingly. So the chair has got really got to be, has got to have a high degree of self-consciousness and on the effect he, he, he has or does not have. So if you go to Kenya Pipeline, when I was chair there, uh, there are, I had rules. I would never come with my phone, ever. It enabled me to pay attention and gradually I saw people uh, people um, not bringing their phones or putting them away. Um, I have no desire to eat those hor horrible uh, mandazis and, and samosas. And as when, I, when I insisted on fruit and on proper coffee and what have you, gradually my board in the end was very health conscious. I would not 
meet my board members outside the boardroom uh, consciously, I think, or deliberately. That was more because KBC was a very political place and there were eyes on you inside and outside uh, the corporation. Those are, those are some of the tips, but the point is that the board will take its cue from the chair. Another one is for people knowing uh, the mandates of, 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 of the organizations. It is amazing how many board directors don't know and to have a, a progressive sack progressive successful board you must be you 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 must know why you exist and I made a point a very strong point to keep uh, members of the board uh, aware and making sure that they kept in front of their minds why we were there and that this wasn't our company this was Wanjiko's company and so on and our job was to give resources to the government in in the form of uh, in, in the form of of uh, dividends. Finally, and this, these are, these applies to all boards, but it's, it's quite important in the context of a, of a public sector board, is the uh, proper relationship between board and management. Again, the, the, the chairman set, set the tone. I know I was accused many times of being a domineering chair, executive chair, chair of chairs and all that, all, 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 all those things. Uh, but that was more because I was very insistent that in the State Cooperation Act, Clause 15.1 states very clearly that all, and, and, and I think I have wording here somewhere. Uh, let me see, I suspect I do have it here. Yes, it says a board shall be, it, it's headed accountability. And it says a board shall be responsible for the proper management of the affairs of a state corporation and shall be accountable for the for the monies, the financial, the business, and the management of a state corporation. It is something that management will never tell you, but it is very real. It is what gives parliament and DCI and the others the authority to summon you as board chair or board members to account for the performance of the corporation. Happy. How about you? Interesting. So one last question before we break up into our rooms. I know one of the things you mentioned was, you know, don't sit in the soft committees. So I'm in HR. I mean, naturally, if I was appointed to a board, I would want to be in the HR committee, uh, perhaps because, um, you know, it's a technical space. Um, so how do we transition as ladies and build the competence so that even though I'm a HR you know, specialist, I can actually chair the finance committee or the strategy committee? You must remember that most board charters give the authority to appoint board committees exclusively to the chair. These are not elective affairs. These are dictatorial affairs. And given that, what you need to do is to tell the chair that you want to serve in this. I've just told you that, especially if, if the chair is as a man, men will generally give in to what women want. So you want to be able to be bold and say, I want to be in the, in the, in the, in the finance committee or in the audit committee, and these are the reasons why. Generally speaking, they will say yes, but you must step up. Otherwise, the natural inclination of the, of the board chair is to look at you and say, ah, HR. That's where you belong. Uh, fortunately, uh, the State Cooperation Act is very clear on the kinds of of of, uh, of sub of co board committees, so that can be the how many and what they do. So, unlike in, in private companies where a board chair, if they dislike you, can 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 create some no, some nonsensical committee and ask you to go and chair it. This is there are some there are some ad hoc committees allowed for a specific purpose. But for example, if you're hiring, hiring a CEO, but generally speaking, the, the choices are there. They are not the choice of committee, the, the, the type of committees and number are not a matter for the chair to determine, but the chair will determine where you go. 
interesting. I can see questions coming in from uh, Dr. Fanis. I'm sure we will be able to get those to John, um, you know, in the course of this session. So at this juncture, allow me to introduce uh, the ladies who will be chairing the different um, chat rooms. As we mentioned, Jordan will move from one chat room to another, uh, facilitated by Kentai. So you will get a chance to be able to host John in your sessions. So our first co-facilitator is Itoto Echakara. She's currently the executive committee member of the Commonwealth Alumni Association of Kenya, and also a member of the Public Affairs Committee of APSEA, Association of Professional Societies of East Africa, and a member of Legal Subcommittee of Chartered Institute of Administrators, and interestingly, currently running for LSK Council Office for 2022-2024. So interesting to hear a little bit about her story. Our second co-facilitator is Chilande Kuloba Waria, founder and MD of Warande Advisory Center. Aside from managing her own corporate board, she has extensive experience serving in various international and national nonprofit and social enterprise boards. She also serves on the Global Steering Committee for Global Standards for CSO Accountability and leads the Technical Committee of Kenya's CSO Regulatory Body, Viwango Limited. So interesting to hear a little bit about her story, given that she's the founder and also sits on her board. Uh, last but not least is Dr. Wangila Fanis, Director of Gender and Development at University of Kabianga and Senior Lecturer in Analytical Chemistry, UOK. Member of various committees at the university and sits on the OWSD Kenya chapter as Vice Secretary. So ladies, uh, allow me to request Kentai to break us up into our rooms. John will have one of the rooms kicking off and then thereafter we'll move from one room to another. So Kentai, please put us in our rooms. you know a call to a, a call to us um to to take advantage of all the opportunities that women on boards network gives us in terms of the learning that is there to continue sharpening our skills um the opportunities for networking like the cotisseries and being active so that we actually are top of mind for people um and more importantly we must update our profiles i know we, you you guys are always hammering this to us but i don't think we take it um you know we, we are always doing it and the second piece was just you know an, an additional skill that was laid and emphasized on is that uh, we must hone our end practice our active listening skills in helping us to navigate the politics that we so often find ourselves in but not just the politics but also to actually help us to influence um john uh, challenged us when we are in those spaces we must be active we must actually contribute and not just be a wallflower um active listening will help us um with the analytical and, 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 and discernment skills that we need. Yeah. In addition to everything else that was said. Thank you, Rose. All right. Thank you, Chairs. Thank you for stepping up and thank you for leading the discussions. Uh, John, we will give you the final word, um, you know, just to wrap up today's session. I'm sure the ladies will be looking for you um, to possibly run another session for us because we suddenly could not have covered everything. And while you do perhaps, uh, you know, speak to the issue around finding a sponsor to hold your hand and perhaps that walk the journey with you insofar as, you know, the board appointments are concerned. And even when you're sitting in boards, you know, navigating the deep waters, especially in public sector boards. So John, you have the last word. I think that before I have the last word, one of the things that I encourage you all to do is active listening. And I like to practice what I preach. I think Rose, you promised Dr. Kitanui she would have a chance to ask a question. I listened. Uh, yes, thank you, John, for that reminder. I was trying to see whether she had posted it on the chat. Uh, Dr. Kitanui? <laughs> Um, no, I didn't post it in the chat, but thank you so much for listening, John. And um, my question is really uh, to, to put forward this notion that uh, perhaps some of us who are newer to uh, board membership 
um, feel that social boards and uh, perhaps non-profit boards might be a fabulous training ground for public boards. Is that um, a myth? Uh, is it something that you would recommend? Uh, because it seems like a gentle introduction. I am sure they are good training grounds. My only challenge with them is that they are so good that you become very comfortable and therefore you never leave them. Uh, and and, and it's, it's almost as though it's a desire to conform to a stereotype that we have, that you join a church board or a school board or a PTA in school or a PA or whatever they, 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 they call them in particular schools. So while I don't discourage them, I think it is so easy to be, to, to be comfortable there and feel at home there and shut that even more because even they have their own politics and you think, oh my goodness, if these are the politics in a, in a school board, well, what is, uh, what is uh, politics in a Kenya pipeline or Kenya power and lighting? like so encouraged but as long as they are seen strictly as 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 long as you are seeing them strictly as a bridge to something else not not an end in themselves but you know uh, uh, the, the mere fact that you women are on this platform means means that you are uh, again to use a male term pretty the ballsy types. So why would you want that soft training ground? Why don't you just go for it? Anyway, that, that's my uh, personal opinion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Beatrice. Uh, I think, John, as you were speaking, we have two questions that just came in through the chat. One is, how do you deal with a CEO who has power over the board? And two, how do you deal with power plays between the board and management? First of all, that question begs a lot. The CEO has power over the board. What power, what power is this? The only power a CEO has over the board is because the CEO has enticed you all to uh, accepting his favors, trips, contracts, tenders, cash handouts, whatever. That's the only power. Every single state corporation charter I know of says that the CEO is appointed by the board. What if a CEO has power over the board is because the CEO owns the board and the only currency the CEO has to own the board is resources, cash, tenders, whatever. Then the board has allowed itself to be owned. They have then the board have nobody to blame by, uh, for by themselves for the predicament they, they find them, themselves in. I, I, I don't even know how to begin answering that question because I would not tolerate any such situation in any board I chaired. So that, that if, of course, I know back of your mind, you are thinking, oh no, the CEO is a relative, of the head of state or is that all this powerful guy, the CEO giving through this way, that there are other CEOs who come in here and, and have left. We've had godlike CEOs in Kenya for a long time. Even today, we've had a, a, a couple or so who are who were seen as who were seen as unsuckable. They've gone. So I'm sorry, that's that's a, that's a question that really uh, speaks to either excessive greed or excessive cowardice in the in the in the, in the board. As to how managing conflicts between management and board, I think it also goes it goes straight back to the character and firmness of the chairman. You are the chairman of a board. The board, as I said uh, to to another group when when I read out to them. Uh, section 15.1, which is something I have had to use in Parliament a lot when, whenever I am accused of being an interfering, busybody, overbearing, overpowerful, or overmighty chairman. 
state corporation uh, clause 15 one accountability board shall be held shall be responsible for the proper management of the affairs of a state corporation and shall be accountable for the monies the financial business and the management of a state corporation period full stop could not be clearer therefore it is you who is responsible. In fact, the second part, uh, 15.2 of that clause goes on to say that the CEO may appear before the parliamentary parliament's investment committee, um, public investment committee, but only on behalf of the board. You are the, you are the company. If a board does not understand what it is there for, it has no business being there. If a board understand what understand what it's, it's there for, then the board chairman who sets the tone for the board should be able to have a very clear understanding right at the outset with the chairman, with, with, the, with, the, with the CEO, what the boundaries are, what the board will tolerate, what the board will not tolerate. The, you also need to be to have a guile to know that whatever you say, man, management will try it on and therefore know how you how you will respond either by unleashing the uh, the audit committee on them by being very firm on how meetings are, are conducted by making it clear that the, the board meeting is your meeting mds i've seen this so many times i cannot I, I can't believe it i have seen chairs asking the managing directors for permission to, to call board, board meetings that is such incredible nonsense it is unbelievable it is your meeting. It is you who de determines the time. It is you who determines the agenda. It is you who determines who speaks. It's you who determines who's, who's, who speaks in the meeting. It's you who determines who other than board members are invited to the meeting, period. It is your meeting and you can, you, you can run it as you please. And board decisions are taken in the boardroom, not outside. Yes, they may have these meetings, board meetings and all that stuff, but board meetings are, uh, are, are are minuted. Make sure that those minutes are very clear and you know them. Because when you when you are called to DCI or Parliament or EEC or whatever or High Court, what they will rely on is exactly what is in the uh, in the board in the minutes. And let me tell you, I'm not talking hot air. I've, I've been to High Court where where the management of KPC tried to to in effect fix me, and they they found themselves in the dock instead purely because I knew the board minutes and I knew what they had said and I could show what we had, what we had actually de decided, which was the exact opposite of what they, 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 they had gone on and done. So there are ways uh, of setting those boundaries and ensuring that this board, that, that, that the board is, is really on top. But really, ultimately, it all boils down to the, the character and strength of your chairman. Thank you, John. Very, very interesting conversation. The compliments are coming in fast and furious, you know, within the chat room and everybody really thanks you. And we surely, surely must have another session with you. So as we close, as I mentioned, you have the final word around uh, finding a sponsor to hold your hand. And the other question is around, if you are an exp inexperienced uh, board member, you know, recently appointed, how do we begin to gain credibility and learn first, you know, so that then we're able to effectively serve within the board? So as you give your closing remarks, perhaps you could address those two issues. The last one by the points I the, by the by those pointers that I had given you earlier. Uh, if, 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 if you want credibility. And I think it, 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 it's not a bad idea. To, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to, re to repeat them in the boardroom. Don't be a wallflower, speak. Don't look for perfection in, in presentations or in the level of knowledge that you, your board colleagues or management have. This is not a place for, 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 for nitpicking. Don't hide in soft committees. Do dress smartly, power dressing even, but don't dress provocatively, daringly, or in an overtly, sexually alluring manner. Read your board papers, but don't cram them. Board papers aren't exams. Board meetings aren't exams. Be on time. Sit where all can see you. Do remain feminine. Don't try to be cold. 
Remember that men are terrified of strong women. So use your feminism selectively. Know when to be steely and when to be demure. Remember also that men are unconsciously competing for your attention. They can't help it. Use this often neglected, underrated, and yet very powerful advantage. Always be conscious of both being living organisms with all the attributes of such. In particular, be on the lookout for elegant knifing, who's the alpha male, the female, and how, how do you align, tame, oppose him or her? Align with tame or oppose him or her? What risks do you run in doing so? Who's the real power? It may not necessarily be the alpha male or female, could, could very well be you. I could not answer that second part uh, in a better way. In the first part, I think you were asking about, uh, if I may paraphrase, I do not do my active lessons in the part, very first part. I think you were asking about what can you repeat, please? I was a question around, you know, how do you find a sponsor? And, you know, do you, is it necessary to have a sponsor to walk this journey with you? Well, I would not hesitate to use that word because of its connotations, but okay, if, if you're going to, to use it, I will use it. First and foremost, while it's good to be on guard, not every, not every person wants to help you because they want your body. Actually, there are people who want to help you because they actually do feel you, you will be useful in their company. You, you see this in private, com private companies where board chairs and, and owners actively go out looking for, uh, for, uh, for talent to put on, onto their boards. Um, secondly, I think, I think the, 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 the question presupposes that we are, we are still in that era where we need sponsors to enter. It's like a club, you know, you, you, you need a proposer and a seconder. I think where you need, you need to change your focus from, do I need a sponsor to be able to join this club? Because as, as I said earlier, you are on WBN and, and, and other places and you are, you are already, whether you like it or not, you are already inside us. What you are, you, are, you are really asking for is, who will I pick to be able to teach me when I'm in there, uh, how to go about, and it's, 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 it, it, it really does boil down to common sense, to active listening, to being watchful, but there will be people prepared to help you. Um, um, and, 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 and one, one place I always that direct people, find out who, has, who needs success the most who really genuinely wants success for whatever reason. It may be in the board, it may be your CS, it may be your PS, it may be people in SCAC or any other of, of those organizations. Find out who it is who really needs success and latch yourself onto them. They are the ones who are going to sponsor you properly because they need you to succeed in order for them to succeed. Sawa? Sawa, Sawa. Thank you, John, for challenging us. Uh, as we started, we said no human is limited. So I guess the opportunities are there for us to take them on. Um, you heard from Dr. Kimetich last time. You heard from John today. We need to work on our profiles. And so Women on Boards has uh, put in place um, a training towards the end of this month. For board profiling, come and learn how to set your CV apart from the rest so that then you can be able to take on some of these appointments. John, we cannot thank you enough. Thank you for being such a great ambassador to championing us into the boardroom. And as I said, I'm sure we will be able to invite you and knock on your doors again so that you can come and share uh, some of the insights as you have done today. Ladies, thank you for taking the time this evening to be with us. Uh, we really value you and uh, look out for the next mentorship session. It will be with Patricia Ithau. We've already sent out the notice. What are these boardroom nuances? Should you serve tea? Should you be the one to pray? How do you operate as a lady? Especially if you're an alpha lady, you know, how do you use the soft power? Uh, you want? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to laugh because... I, I stopped that habit of women being the only ones who pray. And I said, no, 
get the men pray as well. That's part of the power of the chairman. You pray today. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Keep safe and see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Appreciated. Thank you. Thank God you bless. very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you.